whole biotech cohort has been roaring ever since Donald Trump's stunning victory because investors no longer fear that these drug companies will be in Washington's crosshairs. But while the whole group is on fire, not all biotechs are created equal. Some are a heck of a lot more speculative than others. Take Corbis Pharmaceuticals. It's a development stage biotech company with a stock that's rallied more than 380% year to date. This move has been driven by excitement about Corbis's lead drug, Resonab. That's a drug with a host of different indications treating chronic inflammatory and fibrotic diseases, including cystic fibrosis, we hope. The last time we spoke with the CEO about a month and a half ago, Resonab was in the midst of four separate phase two clinical trials. Last week, we got some very positive results on the drug's efficacy treating systematic sclerosis. That's an autoimmune condition that afflicts the body's connective tissue and can cause serious organ damage. Stock spikes 50% on the news, but that's because also it had sold off hard going to this data as some feared or tried to profit from the worst. So let's take a closer look with Dr. Yuval Cohen. He's the CEO of, of Corpus Pharmaceuticals. Get a better sense of how his company's doing, where it's headed. Dr. Cohen, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. All right. Now, you are not a promotional man, so I want oh. people to understand that this is that phase two is not phase three. Correct. Um, what, what you've done here is shown against the placebo better numbers. So normally what we did is a first in patient studies, and those studies are typically small and they're typically short. And I'll be honest with you, what you're typically looking for is some sort of a safety and maybe some sort of efficacy signal. What really surprised us, and I think has created a great deal of excitement in the mm -hmm. field, is we got a much stronger signal than we thought we would mm -hmm. from the study. So what we saw was a score that is used to measure clinical benefit in the disease, mm -hmm. called the CRIS score, improved very, very dramatically versus placebo. And the longer patients were on the drug, the better it got. The CRIS score is made of five subcomponents, and surprisingly, each one of those got better. And again, the longer the patients were on the drug, the last thing that really surprised us was the following. You don't typically get statistical significance in a yeah. phase two study because you're, again, they're small and you're not, right, you're, right. you're on a fishing expedition. Right. Uh, we got statistical significance for the overall improvement as well as certain time points. That to us sends a very clear uh, and a very exciting, honestly, signal of clinical benefit. Okay, so some of the people who are negative on the stock say, well, wait a second, you got to ask them, wasn't the placebo, uh, the people who got it were not as sick as the people in the placebo? Was there anything that made it so it wasn't apple status? So actually, the two groups are very, very similar. And okay. if anything, the placebo group actually was handicapped against us. Okay. So there are certain things about the placebo that made them actually feel um, even better, okay. and so we were actually handicapped. All right, now, uh, this is a this systemic sclerosis, not as big as some others. Uh, uh, the Obviously, cystic fibrosis, terrible disease, be very, very big. Implications from this for other diseases? So the question is a read-through. And yes, remember, read -through. We're, that's be better so term. we're looking at three autoimmune diseases. We've got systemic sclerosis. That's 90,000 patients in the U.S. Okay. and Europe. Okay. Remember, mortality rates can be as high as 50%. Right. We have two other autoimmune diseases, one called dermatomyositis. The data for that should be coming over the summer. And the other one, the largest of our programs, is lupus. Uh, that's wow. almost 500,000 patients in an uncommon disease. These are diseases that do have a certain relationship to each right. other. So there is a certain amount of read through. It's hard to quantify, right. but it's there. Now, originally, this was not necessarily something, you guys got this from someone else. Were they just not doing it correctly? You fiddled with it somehow? It's actually a classic story in pharma. Okay, this drug yeah. was invented at UMass Medical School up in Massachusetts. Okay. And initially, it belongs to a class of drugs that are analgesics. They target the brain for pain receptors. Okay. Turns out it's not a particularly good analgesic, but it does something completely opposite from the class. It actually targets, rather than the brain for pain, it targets the immune system for inflammation and fibrosis. Happens all the time in pharma. How did you realize that they might do that? A lot of preclinical data, a lot of animal data was showing the indications, and from then on we took it into the clinic. Now, there are, uh, in your notes, it does say point blank that you have enough money to continue to do the trials, but when the stock spikes, I always say, if I were a conservative CFO, I would go into Dr. Cohen and I'd say, look, why don't you, uh, why don't we raise some more money? Because we do have so many different clinical trials going, and I want to be sure, I mean, and by the way, that would be fine if you said, listen, we may want to raise some money, but you seem so certain that you have enough money, but no one really ever has enough money. That's a fair statement. One of the advantages we have of our four programs, three of them actually enjoy non-dilutive financing, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, which I know you and I are very yes. passionate about. Right. 
We are the recipients of a $5 million award from them, and two of our three autoimmune programs are actually paid for by the NIH, so we're delighted with that. Okay, so how does that work? They've seen something that they like? I mean, because they're not giving money to everybody. They're not. It's not, it's not based on our, on our good looks. This is really based on very, very solid scientific and medical due diligence. And if you think about it, again, the data that we've now generated, right. looking at key opinion leaders in the field, they're very excited about it. Nothing has ever shown a benefit in scleroderma. Okay, when, uh, this is a term of art. You said there's, there are thought leaders in your group. Please Correct. explain that, why that is not just smart people. There are people who Correct. determine things here. Very much so. So again, autoimmune diseases are seen by rheumatologists, and right. these are actually expert rheumatologists mm -hmm. in their field. Dr. Robert Spira was the principal That's investigator right. in our study. We had, study was done in nine hospitals across the U.S. And recently, he described the data as both breathtaking and unprecedented. Okay, Dr. That, Spira is not a man who's prone to exaggeration. Right. I, that, I was hoping you'd mention because he's yes. a prominent scholar, derma physician with over Correct. 70 publications. And he's a principal investigator in the trial. Yep. Uh, and, and also Dar uh, Dr. Barbara White, chief medical officer, uh, former co-director of Johns Hopkins Center. She so, also... Correct. So Barbara's our chief medical officer. She was at Amgen, at AstraZeneca, at a variety of big pharma. We are, as you mentioned, very conservative people. But when you get a signal that's that strong, I think it's legitimate to get excited. Okay. I want people to understand this is speculative. You know, sometimes in the lightning round you call and say it's a speculative situation. That means you're free to speculate, but it is, let's say, not Merck, as Dr. Yuval Cohen would tell you immediately. Not it's yet. It's not Merck. Not yet. I like that. Dr. Yuval uh, Cohen is the CEO of Corpus Pharmaceuticals. Be careful, speculative, but exciting. Mad yeah, Money's back in the break. Very grateful. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.